Good morning, brethren. How y'all doing? Um, it's just going to be a very quick video. Um, I'm going to be reading to you an article given to me by a brother. Um, but on the outset here, I just want to, um, first of all, brethren, body of Christ, Church of the Living God, uh, please do remember to keep our brother Alexander Hartley in prayer. Um, he's facing quite a daunting task in finding a place to live, and he has until the 10th of this month to find a place to live. Um, so please do keep uh, Brother Alexander Hartley in your prayers, please. Uh, please, brethren. And also, too, um, please keep our beloved brother Aaron uh, Deeran judge in our in your prayers um as he's dealing with uh, many of his health issues and also a lot of uh struggles that he is going through and as of course uh brother jeffrey jones please keep him in your prayers uh that the lord will um that it may be lord's will to heal him quickly and that he may return again onto work and also um for our beloved brother matthew melanson um, that on this day he might have ease in his body, which is just, just raped with pain daily. Please keep these brethren in your prayers, uh, brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God. You know, it's obvious that we are to pray for one another, the Church of the Living God, that we are to pray for one another. Uh, as you all know, I pray for many of you. But also, it is becoming more evident that when it comes to nations, scriptures tell us to pray for the peace of, of Jerusalem. I do. I pray that uh, for at least an hour <laughs> there may be peace in Jerusalem and that your name, Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, may be glorified in Jerusalem, but also for the nations and where you are. For example, here in America, uh, there are people out there who believe that America can turn itself around and become a great and mighty godly nation. Never going to happen. It's never going to happen. America is gone. Our country, for those of you, uh, my countrymen, um, the writing is on the wall. Um, you know, <clears throat> we have been weighed and we are found wanting. <laughs> and um, our nation is going to fall very soon. But there are other nations out there in which the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, is present. And I personally believe it is because of the sake of the Church of the Living God that, um, that there are certain nations out there that have not collapsed. Um, and now, there again, brethren, um, I do not know what it is like in your specific nation. But it has become evident unto me. There is one nation that I have been made aware of more uh, more so of late. That is the nation of Australia. There's a lot of stuff going on in the nation of Australia. And the Church of the Living God, the Body of Christ, that is in Australia. For those of you uh, who are my brothers and who are my sisters in the nation of Australia, um, I pray for you, that you may be bold in your witness and uh, fear the Lord and be strong in Him. Because um, as we're going to find out, there's a lot of, there's a lot of craziness going on in uh, the nation of Australia. There's a lot of craziness going on in my nation of, uh, uh, in America. Hello. <laughs> but some of the things that are being implemented in Australia are kind of an example of what's going to happen in other nations. Now, like I said, 
I don't know what it's like in your nation of Croatia, in the Netherlands. Uh, I kind of do a little bit in England, a little bit in Scotland, um, very little bit uh, I know about uh, Northern Ireland and uh, Southern Ireland, if that's the right uh, terminology. Um, I also am, I am aware of how it is in Canada uh, because of Brother Melanson and Brother Allen. They have uh, made me know, uh, made me aware of things. Um, on that, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true, the real scriptures, and turn in your King James scriptures to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Not Hebrews, Brad. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Not second. <laughs> First Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 6. First Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 6. I exhort, therefore, that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. Note this, though, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. In all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. In due time, are we testifying on to the Lord? How's it going for you out there? Are you being a witness in your nation? But it says here in verse 2, For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead, here's the, here's the clause, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Here in America, the Jesuits run this country. And um, if any of you outside of my nation, America, you, you're you're well aware, <laughs> you Americans, you, you, you got some very big issues, yes. Also in England, in Canada, but Australia. Um, my prayer is for the Church of the Living God, the Body of Christ, that are in Australia, and for that nation. That our brothers and sisters in Australia may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. And come unto the knowledge of the truth. Lord, may you strengthen your body, the Church of the Living God in Australia. May our brothers and sisters in Australia be strong unto you and fear you. And may they go forth to do the work unto where you have called each and every member of the body of Christ in Australia, in England, in Canada. In Croatia, in the Netherlands, in Ireland, Scotland, uh, wherever you may be, the body of Christ. And may you pray for your own nation, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. 
because the times are really getting bad, brethren, as if you haven't noticed. <laughs> right? <laughs> but um, I'm going to share with you now an article given to me from a brother in Australia. And um, it's he sent me this a couple days ago, been busy, but uh, I'm going to be sharing this with you. I'm going to be reading this word for word, best that I can, and of course, I'm going to put the link for this article in the description box. Brethren, please keep uh, in your prayers our brothers and sisters in Australia. Please. And for your own nation as well. So, this is from The Guardian from Microsoft News Corporation.com. The Guardian, the threads that don't connect. COVID gives Australian conspiracy theorists a common home. <laughs> All right. Like I said, I'm going to link this article in the description box, but this is going to be uh, as verbatim as I can make it, Lord willing. Okay. Editor's note, the opinions, and of course, see, I'm using my fancy schmancy smell, uh, cell phone because I can't figure out how to do the share screen thing. But, editor's note, the opinions in this article are the author's as published by our content partner, and do not necessarily represent the views of MSN or Microsoft. Beg your pardon, brother. Okay. In the remote border town of Texas in northern New South Wales last month, a police officer pulled over a truck driver after he allegedly crossed into Queensland without providing identification. In footage posted online, the 33-year-old can be heard asking the officer whether he worked for the corporation known as the Queensland Police in all capital letters. He then asks, am I a man? The officer's deadpan response, it's 2020, mate. What do you identify as? Got him his own thread on Reddit, but the bizarre interaction is not unique. Viral footage of people defying restrictions on borders, large gatherings, and in Victoria, the use of face masks have increasingly peppered Australian news as the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic stretches into its eighth month. This past week, a woman who refused to wear a face mask in a Bunnings hardware store in Melbourne became the latest fodder for the news cycle after she described herself as a living woman to a bemused employee. A few days earlier, footage of a woman reading from a script as she asked an officer, have I disturbed the peace today? While refusing to answer questions at a border stop in Victoria also made headlines. Border stops, having to provide papers from going to, for, for you my American countrymen, for going from state to state, from county to county. And because of the COVID pandemic, we can learn something from what's going on in the nation of Australia. This is why I'm telling you, brethren, that um, pray for your own nation, that we may lead a peace, uh, uh, quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. But also, please, do keep Australia and the brothers and sisters in Christ, Church of the Living God, in your prayers as well. <clears throat> Footage of these encounters and others like them share a similar characteristic. characteristic. In them, the people challenging police appear to be ready, reading from the same script. 
A PDF, a PDF file that has been shared widely across various Facebook groups loosely affiliated with the so-called Sovereign Citizen Conspiracy Movement. Described by the Southern Poverty Law Center in the U.S. as an extremist group, the Sovereign Citizen Movement is a haphazard collection of pseudo-legal beliefs broadly coalesced, co coalesced around the notion that modern government is illegitimate. Sovereign citizens believe that they get to decide which laws to obey and which to ignore, and they don't think that, and they don't think they should have to pay taxes. The SPLC says. Now the scripture teaches totally contrary to that. We are to submit unto government, but when government goes against the authority, the authorized version of the scripture, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures then we, the Church of the Living God, have problems. And we are told to pay our taxes, give tribute to, un tribute, uh, to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear. Okay, the scriptures, especially in the Pauline epistles, does not teach us not to pay our taxes or not to obey the government. It does not teach us that, to, to go against the government. When our governments go against the scriptures, then we have a problem. Then we have a problem. Okay? Let's continue this. In extreme cases, sovereign citizens in the U.S. have been linked to violence. In 2010, a father and son linked to the movement shot to death two police officers in West Memphis, Arkansas, in West Memphis, Arkansas, who had pulled them over in a routine traffic stop. The two men were later killed in a shootout with police. The movement is rooted in racism and anti-Semitism. 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 It's Shem, not Sem. The movement is rooted in racism and anti-Semitism. Though, as the SPLC acknowledges, many followers are unaware of its origins, acts of deadly violence have usually directed against government officials. The Australian wing of the bizarre movement, transplanted here with a few tweaks, is not new. One, uh, one of its most well-known proponents, a Western Australian, Wayne Glue, had his property and assets seized in 2018 after refusing to pay $300 in council rates and legal fees because of a belief local government was unconstitutional. But in the time of COVID-19, Corona gonna get you the poison crown, <laughs> Its adherents have found themselves in a niche. As governments impose unprecedented restrictions on civil liberties in an effort to control the spread of the virus for the common good, your freedoms are being taken away by a scamdemic, a plandemic that is no more dangerous than the common flu, but being amplified to be the mother of all diseases and viruses. <clears throat> As governments impose unprecedented restrictions on civil liberties in an effort to control the spread of the virus, sovereign citizens appear to be attempting to take advantage of broad community uncertainty to push their confused agenda. Yeah, there are some conspiracy theorists out there who um, are not interested in truth, but are pushing their own agenda. We as the Church of the Living God, we're interested in truth. God's truth. Thy word is truth. 
That's what we're interested in. And when it comes to this scamdemic, <laughs> let's continue. Everyone who had a pre-existing conspiracy theory about health or world government or religion, they've all jumped on the COVID bandwagon. And again, look into the ones who are in the upper echelons of all this. The Center for Disease Control, run by a Jesuit. Fauci, a Jesuit. Okay? Uh, the COVID-19 uh, virus uh, was created uh, in the Perbright Institute, but patented by an American company, uh, by America. It's a man-made disease, okay, released in China, communist China, that was um, created by the Jesuits, okay. The Jesuits' hands are all over this. And that's not being a conspiracy theorist. That's being a conspiracy factualist. Let's continue. Professor, Professor Axel Burns, they are far from alone. Experts say that the plan, <laughs> pandemic, the pandemic has offered an umbrella under which a bevy of fringe conspiracy groups and far-right actors have found common cause. Cam Smith, an independent researcher who focuses on conspiracy theorists and the far right, says links between previous discrete groups, including the sovereign citizens, anti-vaxxers, QAnon, and anti-5G groups have increasingly blurred during the pandemic. And uh, for example, I am an anti-vaxxer myself. I am totally anti-vaccination, totally. Uh, the 5G, uh, Brother Aaron Judge, uh, Aaron Deering Judge, did a wonderful uh, couple of videos on the 5G himself. Uh, I will probably, uh, Brother Aaron, you see this? I'm going to ask you if I can link those things that you did on the 5G in this video as well, okay? Quote, it's a weird moment where all of these groups who usually have their own thing have come together with COVID. End quote. He says, quote, it doesn't even really seem to matter if they don't necessarily meld. They find ways to smooth it over. End quote. Society is obsessed with conspiracy theorists. The most visible expression of this trend occurred in May, when 10 people were arrested and one police officer was hospitalized after demonstrators gathered in Melbourne to protest against self-isolating, social distancing, tracking apps, and 5G being installed. The uh, contact tracing. And the reason why it's a six foot is if you're um, closer to each other than six foot, they're not going to be able to track you as good as if you were six foot apart. The hum, uh, excuse me, the sneeze of man, um, and you can look this up on your own, the sneeze of man can go as far as 30 feet. Okay? The sneeze of man. And I know people who can <coughs> spit at least 15 feet. Okay? <laughs> no, the six foot thing has nothing to do with health. Fact check me. Do your own research. Look into it yourself. It has nothing to do with health. It has to do with the contact tracing applications. Okay? Check that out. The protest, which was promoted on various Facebook groups, linked to fringe conspiracy groups, including, including QAnon and various anti-vaxxers, included signs about 5G, China, and the Murray-Darling River. Various speakers claimed COVID-19 was a conspiracy orchestrated by 
globalists. While one of the main organizers of the rally, Phanos Panayides, invoked the mark of the beast. And amen. Yes, I also am fully persuaded that the COVID-19 biological weapon created by the Jesuits is that, is that a conspiracy orchestrated by the Jesuits. Absolutely. I, guilty as charged. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Professor Axel Burns, a leading internet researcher from the Queensland University of Technology, has been researching misinformation related to the Plan 5G network during the COVID-19 pandemic. He agrees that under the umbrella of the pandemic, the borders between different corners of internet conspiracy have begun to vanish. The example of 5G gives you all of these desperate, disparate things, disparate things, that it's a dangerous technology because it's linked to some sort of electro fog, or that it's the trigger for some sort of biological weapon, or that it's linked to the coming of the Antichrist, he says. I partially agree with that. It's all being, uh, it's all set up to the coming uh, Antichrist system, the Mark of the Beast. I totally agree with that. And most of you, the Church of the Living God, I would, I'm just guessing, I would reckon you do too. Let's continue. There can be these five or six totally different threads that don't really connect. But what it seems, but it seems to me. But what it seems to me is that everyone who had some sort of pre-existing conspiracy theory about health or world government or religion, they've all jumped on the COVID bandwagon and found a way to connect what's happening with the virus to their own existing worldview. Quote, so if you're against 5G, COVID is either making it worse or is caused by 5G. I don't believe that. If you're concerned about world government taking over, the stay-at-home orders, and masks are a sign of that, everyone retrofitting COVID into these existing, everyone is retrofitting COVID into these existing conspiracy theories. Yeah. Yeah, like I've told you many times. Somewhere out there, when a Jesuit sees someone, there a Jesuit somewhere is laughing. Absolutely, absolutely. As when Ronald Reagan was sworn in in front of an obelisk, that was a sign unto all the Jesuits that they had taken all over all the churches, and a sign unto the Jesuits, I believe that they have almost um, taken over all the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, if you're, if you're of the Church of the Living God and you're wearing a face mask, um, for the common good, you're out of fellowship with the Lord. And if you're a Christian, thinking you're so righteous and pious, being concerned for other people, wearing a face mask and um, bowing down to the Jesuits and these stupid maxims, you have some very serious issues. You really do. I think you need to examine yourself in the light of scripture. Let's continue. For the most part, these online groups have negligible impact on the real world. 
But the new outbreak of a pushback against COVID-19 restrictions poses a new challenge for authorities grappling with the consequences of people indifferent to the potency of the virus. Yeah! Potency of the virus! Yeah, it's contagious. Yes. Ah, it is a real virus, yes. But it's no more worse than the flu, than the common cold. And it's curable through natural remedy, through vitamin A, vitamin C. Just overload your side. You, you can look all of this up. The recovery rate from those who get the poison crown is from 95 to 98%. Look that up on your own time. But you're not hearing about that, are you? Corona gonna get you. Corona gonna get you. Yeah. 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 Um, yes, it has killed people. Absolutely. Yes, it has. And unfortunately, it will kill more people. Yes, it will. But it is not the monolithic beast that the Jesuit media has made it to be. And those of you lost people out there. Oh, well, we should do what we, can, we ought to. Or those of you who are Christians. Well, we ought to do what we ought to do for the common good. <clears throat> I say this with all charity of the Church of the Living God. I think you ought to go take a long walk off of a short beer. Let's continue. As Victoria struggles to contain its second wave outbreak... Conspiracy groups continue to flout regulations. This week, dozens of people linked to the Sovereign Citizens Movement gathered in a Melbourne gym in violation of restrictions on gatherings. A great night together discussing the putrid conduct of the police, government, and media lies, one attendee wrote on social media after the event. We are strong and won't bow down to these oppressors. Similarly, on Friday, about 30 anti-mask protesters gathered at Melbourne's Shrine of Remembrance just before 7 a.m. and held a minute's silence. It also poses challenges for the social media companies providing the platform on which these communities of misinformation flourish and the media outlets struggling to come to terms with how to cover such phenomena. After Cam Smith posted footage of the woman refusing to wear a mask inside a Bunnings store to Twitter, it was quickly picked up by mainstream news networks. An analyst by the ABC found news articles about the incident where the top two stories on social media about coronavirus in Australia over the last week measured by engagements. She was later featured on the Seven Network burning a face mask before appearing on Nine's Today Show where she claimed falsely that COVID-19 case numbers are not true. And there is evidence that you can find on your own that tells us that government officials have falsified numbers. Have falsified numbers. As several of the brethren have said, someone can get their head bashed in in a car wreck and, you know, put their favorite head through a windshield, right? And they might have had the flu. Oh, well, he died from a car accident, but yet, chalk it up to COVID-19. Okay? The guy might have heart disease or something. Chalk it up to COVID-19. He might have irritable bowel syndrome and die. Ah, chalk it up to COVID-19. They inflated the numbers. Inflated the numbers. Totally inflated the numbers. There's evidence out there that can prove that. You find it on your own. Absolutely. Absolutely. And find it quick. Find it quick. Because the Jesuits who run all the media... Any truth that is out there, I'm sure they're taking steps to get rid of it. 
And if any of you have links onto um, statistics on what we're talking about, put them down there in the comment section. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> Okay, let's reread that. She was later featured on the Seven Network burning a face mask before appearing on Nine's Today Show where she claimed falsely that COVID-19 case numbers are not true and that the virus was biochemically engineered intentionally. Yes, it was. There's a United States patent on it. I got the link for it in the About section here on my channel. I have the proof here on my channel. It's a patented virus, not natural. Okay? Yes. Yes. Biochemically engineered intentionally. Yes. Yes, it was. When the Today host, Carl Stefanovic, abruptly ended an interview, it, promoted, it prompted another round of stories about the confrontation. The public health academic professor Julie Leask from the University of Sydney is one of Australia's leading experts on, vac on vaccination uptake. She says she has lost count of the number of interviews she's done on the anti-vax movement and is frustrated by what she sees as the media's outsized, outsized focus on its hardcore proponents. Quote, even the fact you're doing the story is part of the game, she says. Quote, it feels like society is obsessed with conspiracy theorists. And I still haven't figured out why. I almost wonder if we're all attached, attracted to these near Attri neat attributions for problems in the same way conspiracy theorists are. If you have a conspiracy theorist who doesn't want to lock down or wear a mask, you don't have to acknowledge more complex problems like gaps in our healthcare system. But Leask does concede there is a dilemma in whether or not media should cover these issues. Pointing to polling showing a perhaps larger than expected number of Australians do believe conspiracy theories related to issues such as 5G. And absolutely, I believe that as well. Quote, there is clearly something going on in this pandemic to see so many Australians believing those views, she said. Quote, the general explanation in my field is in times of uncertainty, people will seek more solid, clear-cut explanations to give themselves some comfort. It's worth noting that, and it's kind of concerning, end quote. When fringe beliefs become destructive, when it becomes a destructive, the challenge for media organization lies somewhere in the tipping point. That is, when fringe beliefs and their proponents begin to slip into the mainstream. In the U.S., opposition to face masks has found its way into mainstream discourse as an issue of individual freedom, in some cases peddled by Republican figures, including Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, don't get me started on Trump. In Australia, that Rhetoric, very interesting choice there. In Australia, that rhetoric has so far been confined to the fringes of the debate. And some notable ex exceptions. When Victoria mandated face masks in public, the Herald Sun col col columnist, Sky News host, and right-wing pundit Andrew Bolt labeled it virus hysteria. There is now no firm data on attitudes towards wearing masks in Australia. I bet there is if they just asked people. Though the Victorian Premier, Daniel Andrews, has praised the state's compliance with the new mandate, 
A survey conducted by the Australian Bureau of Statistics in late June found one in eight people nationally said the pandemic had promoted them to wear face masks. One in eight people nationally said the pandemic had promoted them to wear face masks. One out of eight. While it's hard to know the extent to which anti-mask sentiment has crept into Australia, Leask said the danger was when an issue became divided along ideological gradients. End quote. Quote, in the same way that climate changed in the 1970s and 80s started to become an issue of, not just do we believe in global warming, but, by the way, this is a lefty idea. So if you're conservative, you're not going to agree with it, she said. You start to see those leading commentators influencing a larger group of people. If part of belonging to whichever tribe is to also believe it's, it is my right to not wear a mask, then you might see a greater amount of non-compliance. Amen. 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 Hold on one second, brethren. All right. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Continuing, there is no doubt, however, that online communities linked to conspiracy theories can impact can impact on the real world without necessarily bleeding into the mainstream. In countries including New Zealand, for example, anti-5G activists have been linked to the, to the destruction of phone towers during the pandemic. In Australia, The Guardian has seen leaked telegram conversations between members of anti-5G Facebook groups openly discussing plans to destroy towers. That's going too far, obviously. Obviously. Yes, quote, yes, I hope we can take action soon. We can definitely burn them, end quote, one woman wrote in April. Quote, this app isn't secure enough if we're going to talk about damaging 5G towers, end quote, another replied. Quote, I think we should take any discussions regarding physically damaging the towers to an underground level. It's frustrating going around in circles discussing the negative effects of 5G when we could be actively planning real activism, end quote. Cam Smith, <clears throat> Cam Smith, who has been at the forefront of watching the evolution of various threads of the conspiracy movement, believes one of the most obvious reasons for its escalation during the pandemic, pandemic <laughs> could be true. Quote, people are stuck at home and online a lot more. End quote. That all may worship the Antichrist. Quote, it sounds trite. But I've seen some of them saying, you know, I was a sheep. And then COVID happened. It says here, I was a sheep. And then COVID happened, and I had time to research, he says. Quote, I think most of them are primed for it, though. They might have had a conspiracy they believed in already. And this whole thing has happened and just set them on path. End quote. And that is the end of the article. Like I said, I am going to link. Uh, I'm going to link the uh, article in the uh, description box of this video, so you can read it yourself. Okay. <clears throat> Turn in your King James scriptures to. The book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. The very first psalm. Because psalms don't have chapters, they are their own. Psalm 1. Go there. 
in your King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Follow me along. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away, carried about by divers uh, winds and doctrines. Just butchered that, beg your pardon. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And Psalm 2, verses 1 and 2. Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let's read verse 3 and 4, Let us break their bands asunder, and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. <laughs> and also go to Psalm 53. Psalm 53. Again, you're of the church of the living God. Saved, born again, body of Christ. Don't want to finish this. Don't be afraid. Fight. Fight these things. Because what they are implementing is contrary to Scripture. Psalm 53. We're going to see once again the definition of a fool. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. Hello. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them has gone back. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Who eat up my people as they eat bread? They have not called upon God. There were they in great fear, where no fear was. There are people out there who are afraid of all of this. You know, touch elbows, there's this thing going on instead of a handshake. People get rabid at you if you stand within the six foot and you try to tell, oh, it has nothing to do with your health. <laughs> Don't want to hear it. Why? There were they in great fear where no fear was. For God has, hath scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame, because God hath despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when God bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Amen. Amen. Isaiah, Isaiah, chapter 8, 
Isaiah chapter 8, verses 5 on to verse 13. Isaiah chapter 8, verses 5 on to verse 13. The Lord spake also unto me again, saying, For as much as this people refuseth the waters of Shiloh, that go softly and rejoice in reason, and of Maliah's son. Now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up, up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria, and all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels, and go over all his banks. Look at what the Jesuits have done, and how they've gone over all the banks of over all the world. How they have spread their po uh, propaganda. And every, like I said, every time a Jesuit sees someone wearing, <laughs> they're laughing. You lost people. You Christians who fall for all this. The devil and his angels, his ministers of righteousness, they're laughing at you. How's that feel? How's that feel? <clears throat> Verse 8. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breadth of, the, of thy land, O Emmanuel. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and you'll be broken in pieces. For your own common, for the common good, for your own safety, stay-at-home orders, social distancing, these contact tracing apps, becoming mandatory vaccine, <laughs> Verse 10, take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us, the church of the living God, the body of Christ. I firmly believe that it is because of the church of the living God, the body of Christ, in whatsoever nation you are in, it is because of the church of the living God that the Lord has not destroyed said nation. Here in America, there are still those of the church of the living God who care for the lost, who want to see the lost get saved, who care about the truth. And are doing the work of the Lord. And I firmly believe for that reason, in accordance with 2 Thessalonians, okay? I firmly believe, because of that, America has yet to be destroyed. I firmly believe that. I firmly believe that. And again, brethren, as we read in the article, the second wave thing. Again, when you have the black Pope, Sosa talking about the second wave and what uh, in the one video previously where I shared some information uh, with you about what's going on in this uh, in Australia and even this okay that's in Australia you my countrymen in whatever nation you are in the world that kind of stuff that's happening in Australia is coming here coming to your nation <laughs> Who are you afraid of? Check this out. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you? Say ye not a confederacy to all them 
to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him, I have that circled, be your fear, and let him, I have that circled, be your dread. So, are you going to be afraid of the government that tells you, ha ha, social distancing, contact tracing apps, mandatory vaccine, or you're going to a re-education camp? Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. Got to read verse 14. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. <laughs> Let's keep reading this, shall we? And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. I, and I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for, the, are for signs and for wonders in Israel, because the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Greek is a Gentile. Hello. From the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Get a load of that. Get a load of that. To the law and the testimony. The testimony. If they speak not according to this word, lowercase w, of course, it is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly beset, bestead, and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves, and curse their king and their God, and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth, and behold, trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. Talk about a little instruction in righteousness there, huh, brethren? Hmm? Isaiah 66. Also, too, I have to give um, credit to uh, beloved brother Alexander Hartley, who uh, I had to abruptly um, hang up with him this morning. Again, keep him in your prayers, uh, because some guy came over to fix our sink. But uh, we kind of went through these together and whatnot. So, but Isaiah 66, verses 1 through 5. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. <laughs> um... <laughs> Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? Uh, today, in this dispensation, if you are truly saved and born again of the church of the living God, ye are sealed unto the day of redemption, and your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost that dwells within you if you are saved. You are sealed, eternally secure. You're going to heaven whether you like it or not. Okay? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Not them buildings. Okay? Not the buildings. 
Let's continue. For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. I'm definitely poor, contrite. Do you tremble at this book? At the scriptures? Do you tremble at the scriptures? He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, note this. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. And their soul delighteth in their abominations. Verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you and cast out, and your brethren that hated you that cast you that cast you out for my name's sake, said, "Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed." Second Thessalonians. Second, not Second Peter, Brad. We already covered that. Second Thessalonians, chapter two. Of course, of course, you, you kind of figured that out already, didn't you? When we were reading uh, here, uh, hold your place there in Isaiah sixty-six. Okay, hold your place there. When we were reading verses three and verse four, okay, you probably already put the link onto this in your own head, right? Praise the Lord. Second Thessalonians, chapter two. Verses 5 on to verse 12. <clears throat> 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 5 on to verse 12. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye may, and now ye know what withhold, ah, and now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. <laughs> Hello. Only he who now letteth will let stop hinder until he, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. And then I have that circled. Circle that in your scriptures. Circle it. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Note the capital W there. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Signs and wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Isaiah 66, verses 3 and 4. He that killeth an ox as if he uh, he that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. Okay? He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. Note right here, 
up to swine's blood, okay? He that killeth an ox, as if he slew a man. Does God take care for oxen? Ever heard of PETA? People for the ethical treatment of animals will probably beat you up because you hurt an animal. But if you abort a child, thank you, bless you, Brother Matthew Melanson. When you abort a child, they're okay with that. But, you know, eat a, eat a pig, eat some bison. He that sacrificeth a lamb, as if he cut off a dog's neck. A dog. I got a little dog, Zena. But in the derogatory sense, a man, uh, in a derogatory sense here in scripture, the dog returneth to his own vomit, and the sow is washed and the wallowing of her own mire again, mire again. I just paraphrased that and butchered it. Beg your pardon. Okay? You see that? A lamb was a requirement for certain sacrifices under the dispensation of the law. Replacing it with a dog. Get it? Get it? Okay? He that offereth an oblation, an offering, as if he offered swine's blood, and under the dispensation of the law, the swine, of course, was a forbidden food. Couldn't eat swine. Swine's blood. Pig's blood. Get it? Let's continue. He that burneth incense, as if he blessed an idol. Jesuit. And that's all I got to say about that. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. Replacing what God has chosen with what we have chosen. You see that? I also will choose their delusions. You want to believe in what's false? God, God will give you the truth. Here. But you want to believe in this uh, this nonsense? Have fun storming the castle. God will send you strong delusion. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Daniel, Daniel chapter 11, Daniel chapter 11, verses 32 on verse 35, Daniel chapter 11, verses 32 on verse 35, and such as do wickedly against the covenant, Shall he corrupt by flatteries? Flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Uh, hello, brother, sister. Hello. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword, and by flame, by captivity, and by spoil many days. You know the truth about all this nonsense? You know the Lord? You love the Lord and believe this book, the King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures? Speak as the Lord will guide you to. This is not the time to be complacent or quiet. Like those uh, two wonderful videos that uh, Brother Victor did. Beautiful testimony. That's how every one of you should be. 
That's how every one of you should be. Who do you fear? Hmm? Let's continue. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Cleave to them with flatteries. Oh, I believe in what you're doing, but I, I, I just, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to rock the boat. You know, I, I'm concerned for the common good. Oh, they, they might take away certain benefits. Oh, oh, I might get in trouble because I'm not complying. Oh, I, I, I believe in what you're doing. I'm for you, but I, I just don't want to be part of it. Playtime's just about over, boy. What are you doing? <clears throat> Verse 35. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them, and to purge, and to make them white even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. Our time is coming to an end. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Our time is coming to an end. And all you fakes are going to be left behind. <laughs> and you're beginning to see just a little smidgen of what you're going to be dealing with. But then again, brethren, who do you fear? Who do you fear? Fear Uncle Sam? I, I will confess what's going on in Australia sounds like that would be very nerve-wracking. But Isaiah chapter 8 again. Verses 11 on to 13. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. Do you fear the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh no, he's your homeboy, isn't he, right? He's just, when you get up to heaven, right, you're just going to high-five him and he's going to give you a wrestling bear hug. You don't know the true Jesus Christ of the King James Scriptures. You don't know who he is. You don't. Oh, you like the red words, right? In the four gospel accounts for the crucifixion. Um, my Cambridge here doesn't have red words in the book of Revelation, but if you have a set of King James scriptures, uh, read the red words in uh, the first couple chapters of Revelation. Some of these red word Christians, it's like, oh, well, I, 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 it's, it's almost sounds like another person uh, in Revelation than the one that's before the uh, crucifixion. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. We serve one God, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Daniel chapter 12, verses 3 and 4. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Knowledge has been increased, but has it made things better? The only knowledge that you need to increase is 
right here in this book, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Do you? Hey, do you actually truly know the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, he knows my heart. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. But do you know him through a relationship? Do you know God? Or do you just know of him? Or do you know him personally? And verse 10. Verse 10 in Daniel chapter 12. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And what is wisdom? Huh? Job? The book of Job? 28, not Esther, Brad, Job 28, verse 28, and unto man he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verses 18 through 27. You know, brethren, you're going to make a stand for the scriptures right here, for this book, King James Scriptures. You're going to conform your life to the scriptures and allow the Lord to work in your life. Get rid of that. Don't don't touch that. You I told you not to do it. You're gonna fine, go ahead. Then you get chased and rebuke, corrected, and your consequences <clears throat> fall on your own head. Lord's like you wanted it, didn't you? John chapter 15, verses 18 on to verse 27. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Hmm. My name often gets cast out as evil for the Son of Man's sake. By those who teach nothing, <laughs> who don't even read out of the scriptures themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you don't teach nothing. You don't teach nothing. All you do is backbite and attack. You don't teach nothing. You don't teach nothing. You don't. How often do you read out of the scriptures? How about answer the scriptures that you're fighting against with scriptures of your own? No, you don't. <clears throat> if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you, because you were one of them. Now, you, now you're saved. By grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Listen, you mention both. Okay? 
Remember the word, lowercase w, that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If, right here. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had they had not had sin. But now have they both seen, <laughs> circle that, I have that circled. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Oh! <gasps> You mean Jesus is the Father? Is that my name? No, really? But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, okay? Even the Spirit of Truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Spirit, soul, and body. The Comforter. Spirit. The Father, the soul, shall testify of me. The body. Skin suit. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Verse 27, And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. How are we at bearing witness, brethren? Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, verses 24 on to verse 26. Go ahead and read the context on your own time here in Acts 26. This is when uh, Paul was uh, uh, putting his defense before Agrippa, and um, Festus here was speaking to him too. Verse 24 on to verse 26. In Acts chapter 26. And as he spake thus and, <laughs> excuse me, and as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. I ain't mad. You ever get that one leveled at you there, uh, brother, sister? But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus. Are you looking at that? Are you looking at, don't, don't look at me. Are you looking at that? But speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. It was shooed openly. Speaking the word of truth in soberness. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5. 
We will, let's read from verse 1 on to verse 20. Can you, can you handle this? Then we'll be done. Besides, my wife's going to be home in a little bit anyway. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 20. The other part of Ephesians uh, from verse 22, um, I'm going to address in another uh, video here in the future. Still got to put that one together for my one brother that asked me to do that. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and verse 20. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love. Walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Be thankful. In all things, give in, in all things, give thanks. Good, bad, indifferent. Yeah, in all things, give thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Uh, remember what we read in Isaiah chapter 8? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness. Your past life. But now, circle that in your scriptures, are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. <laughs> Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. What fruit is all this uh, corona going to get you, COVID-19 propaganda and madness and stupidity? What fruit is it producing? But rather reprove them. Don't associate, don't let lost people into your life. You're going to be amongst the lost outside, yes. But there comes certain times in your life, brethren, when people who were your friends, even your family members, hi, you have to cut them dry and get rid of them. Do so. Verse 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Like you said, uh, Brother Christopher Lappin, how you brought up about um, that uh, verse, I, I have it written uh, in a piece of paper here in the scriptures about uh, that portion in Psalm 27 that you can tie in to proving that Jesus Christ is God the Father. Yes. Yes. See that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. <laughs> Brad, <laughs> write your name 
in your scriptures after that verse to remind yourself. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. How do you do that? Search the scriptures daily to see whether these things be so. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. You can drink some wine. Yes, I do. Every once in a while, I have a glass of wine. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I don't get snuckered. I don't get drunk. It's okay to have a little wine. It is. But don't get drunk. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. In the fear of God. Paul never talked about fearing God. Go back to Isaiah chapter 8. Let us leave, uh, let us end this video on this note. Of course, verses 11 on to verse 13 again. For our instruction in righteousness, of course. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Let's read this together, out loud. Go ahead. Read this out loud to yourself. Ready? Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. Who do you fear? Who do you fear? <laughs> Say you fear the Lord, huh? Then start acting like it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, brethren, pray for your own nation. And remember to keep our brothers and sisters in Australia in prayer. In the Netherlands. In England. In Scotland. In Ireland. In Canada. Mexico. Croatia. And here. In America. Pray for one another. And for those of you in Australia, you know, if any of you who are from Australia who are not saved and happen to see this, I pray that the Lord will send a member of the Church of the Living God, a part of his body. And if you're lost and living in Australia and one comes up to you, you would do well to take heed to what the Lord will say to you through that man or woman. By your head. Lord, uh, thank you for this beautiful day. Uh, thank you for this time. Um, be able to share with you and your word. Um, Lord, uh, your will be done in Australia, in America, in Canada, Croatia, um, 
the Netherlands, New Zealand, Germany, um, England, uh, Norway, Northern Ireland, Scotland, your will be done. May you give us all strength, strengthen your body, quicken us again, Lord, that we may be bold to speak your word in the fear of you and not the fear of man. May you give us boldness to stand for the truth of your word, to resist the devil, to expose these heresies, and to the, expose the nonsense that's going on out there. Um, your will be done in uh, the life of our brother Alexander. Uh, please provide for him. Please provide uh, comfort and ease for brother Matthew Millinson. Uh, please, um, if it is your will, heal brother Jeff Jones quickly. Um, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, just your blessing upon your body, the Church of the Living God. Thank you, Father in Heaven. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, you be glorified. May you be glorified through this, and um, just thank you, Father in Heaven. Um, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Alrighty, brethren, that's it for this one. I love you. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.